Nah, hold up. No, you ask me a question, I'ma finish this shit. Ain't no cut me off for none of that shit. This my shit. The wardrobe, I mean, set. I don't, we don't need none of that shit. When real shit happen, y'all see that shit come down. You ain't doing that. You ain't smoking that for this. Okay, okay, okay. This is your boy Jay Hop, and this is my co-host Rage. Somewhere, I'm hungry. <laughs> and this is how we do it expeditiously. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Yes, yes, yes. All right, we back, man. This is your boy Jay Hop, Rage, and this is expeditiously, man. We like to start our show off with a uh, a marijuana moment. He like to start it off with a marijuana minute. I like to start off with a Twinkie. This guy. I can't even keep enough food around here for this dude. But it's all good, man. If he gonna work for food, let's get it in. You know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> like I said, I like to have a little marijuana moment, man. Uh, rage, man, because what I've noticed that it's a lot of people that don't have the correct knowledge of what they indulge themselves in on a regular basis. Gotcha. And what I want to do uh, with my podcast, I want my podcast to be real raw, but I also want it to be informative. Got you. You see what I'm saying? And uh, that's something that, you know, I know a little bit about, but I got enough respect and everything about it. So let's go on our little marijuana moment, you know, and uh, today the topic is uh, Shativa. Okay. In the marijuana moment. I, I met Sativa. She got a bad rep in the Right. Head. That's a fly ass name, right? <laughs> it's dope as hell. <laughs> I want to break it down by just giving you the definition of a Sativa. Okay. One of the two major types of cannabis plants, Sativa gives an uplifting and energetic high. This is better used for daytime smoking, as it is great for having new ideas and bring. And being creative, great for uplifting thoughts, increased focus, creativity, and helps fight depression. You see what I'm saying? So if you're a person that's really involved doing a day-to-day -day far as with, a, with your job, you're creating, you're in the studio, you, you're a writer, you're, you're a painter, or whatever the case may be, but you smoke weed, this is a way of knowing what type of strand to indulge in that's not going to affect your ability during your day to day. To function. Right. Facts. Understood. Perfect example. I'm going to give y'all an example of a shatiba. Before you give an example, right, I want to throw a monkey wrench in your whole thing, right? So, okay, me as a person who doesn't smoke, I've been amongst many a cipher and have seen many a blunt in circulation. Right. I've yet to meet a joker say, hey man, what is this? Is this a sativa or a so-and-so or so-and-so? They just puff, puff, and pass. Is it right. proper etiquette to either tell a person what you're smoking to see if it that goes with their regimen uh, in terms of uh, where they at in the day and where they want to function? You know, or is it just assumed like whoever's in the cipher, you got their interest at heart and maybe y'all all on the same vibe? Like, where does this education, how can it be interpreted in the hood? You well, what the hood has to do is it has to do like Jermaine Hopkins and get up to speed. And that's why I got my, you know, virtual uh, 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 podcast going. And I'm, I'm reaching people where I didn't even realize I could because I'm so, you know, I've been in the game since 89. Uh, so what it is, is you, you have these ciphers and you have, you know, people smoking and, you know, they're, they're, they're. Judgment of what they're buying mm -hmm. is based on how good it smells, how strong it is, and what it look like. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Gotcha. So you could have some weed that look good, strong. With this medical marijuana right now, all of it is good for something. Mm. But you have to know what you're smoking is what is it, what is good for. If you claim to be a smoker, let's get into that part. Now, that's what that's what my marijuana moment is all about. You know what I'm saying? Just sharing some knowledge on it. You know, people want to call in with different, you know, because I don't know it all. Y'all see, I'm, I'm getting my facts. I'm making sure I ain't telling y'all the wrong shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I keep 
I keep some shit the way you telling me such and such, I can look it up. I got a marijuana dictionary, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. a, 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 a strain guide mm -hmm. and all of that. Cause you know, then I got a bad memory. I don't remember all that shit. <laughs> and I don't got time to sit down and study this shit. So we need to find out which, which strand assists memory then. <laughs> Right, that's de definitely, because mine is fucked up. <laughs> but anyway, this Shativa, man, you got different buds of Shativa. One that we all know, especially my cats out in Jersey, New York, straight off the East Coast. Big shout out to the East Coast. We on the East Coast, we love sour diesel. Tell me about Probably. Jesus Christ. You got that towel? Oh, you know what I mean? I need that tapa. Wait, wait, wait. You're actually, I'm confused. Sour diesel is not to be confused with loud, right? Well, or, see, or is there all loud? of it is called loud is okay. the nickname for weed. Okay, okay, okay. Nigga can have some Reggie. We call it Reggie, Reggie Miller. You know what I'm saying? Or that mint class that they done got rid of. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know when I when I first learned and respected the term called loud? Is I was in the uh, pharmacy one day, and two jokers walked in there, and I swear, they must have had it in a pocket. It lit up the whole <laughs> pharmacy. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that so? That that mean they had some good stuff. Well, see, back, I'm sure then when this happened, was you was in New York? Absolutely. Yeah. They had sour diesel. Sour diesel. Right. I didn't know. I don't know where you were at. Mm -hmm. I don't know who it was, but I can almost bet you. If we can rewind the times and get back to that person, I can ask him, what's that you smoking on, man? That shit smell good as hell. You know I got that towel? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Just like everybody, you know, you get a million dollars, you go get a fucking Rolls Royce. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You go get some- Is that considered high there. grade? That would be you high grade. You got that right. I can tell you. Sour diesel, this is what it do. It's a sativa. So it's good for smoking during the day. So everybody that want to smoke during the daytime and- they got shit that they got to do during the course of their day. Mm -hmm. They could fuck with a sour diesel. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because what a sour diesel is, this strand is hard hitting and is, is energizing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The strand is long lasting. Uh, stress and pain and depression can easily fade away with this. This strand is most popular in Midwest to West America. You see what I'm saying? Now, one thing I do know for sure, my West Coast niggas. Let me say my West Coast people, because I got female friends out there and all that. And I know we use the word nigga a lot, man. I'm going to get into all of that too, man, because it's just it's just something that we, you know, you just adapt to or, or, or whatever. And I know it's people out there that, run, you know what I'm saying, going to, you know, go against that, contradict that or whatever. Nah, you know, all that's well and good. This ain't the fucking NAACP show. This is the J-Hop show, and I, I I basically spill it how I am. I'm not finna get up here and, you know, change all of that to try to pray. I do that in movies. You give me a movie script, I'll be who you want me to be. On on, 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 on Do It Expeditiously podcast, on this Expeditiously podcast, like I like to say, it's my shit. Expeditiously. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I just wanted to have that marijuana moment and I'm going to be giving that to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Whatever knowledge I got, I'm going to share with it in the whole nine. But like I was saying, my people's on the West, man, like sour diesel out there is garbage. Wait a minute, I thought that the West had the best weed. West Coast. They, see, that's why sour diesel to them is got. They send all the sour oh. diesel this way. The so only way they can make money off of sour diesel is by coming this way, where it's one of that, okay. on the East Coast. Okay. As far as on the West Coast, like, sour, that's like, that shit is the cheapest one on it. Damn, that's deep. Right. They like that OG it. up north and out there in uh, 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 hmm. Oakland, you know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to my boy Be Legit. You know what I'm saying? And all my cats out there, sugar free. Mm. All the all my West Oak Coast Town, people. Bay man, area. For sure, the Bay Area. They like them cookies. Mm. You know what I'm saying? My boy, you know what I'm saying? Uh 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 uh, uh Kings of Cali. You know, uh shout out to the twins, man, that always hold me down as soon as I get off the plane. Yo, twin, I'm over here at the hotel, such and such. All right, nigga, we coming through to get you. Damn. And it's done. You know, that's that motorcycle love that motherfuckers don't even feel like a, a, they, they, at least they don't let me know it or, or make me feel like 
they really fucking with a legend. You know what I'm saying? They fucking with with, with one of they one of they biker brothers. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Cause that that's the vibe it's on. We doing right. motorcycle shit. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Well, let me let me take a quick cue on the whole discussion of the uh, the cannabis issue. Um, again, um, I have I'm, I happen to be a person that have never indulged in smoking. Um, I don't have any judgment against it. Just never really you know appealed to me. But what is appealing to me these days is the uh, the uh, CBD oil and some of the mm. extracts that's coming from, I guess, the cannabis plant. And I'm learning that it has medicinal properties in terms of uh, being used as a salve and different ointments for joints. So I'm really interested in learning that because I could use that kind of stuff. I even heard about them putting like the drops like under the tongue. And that's as a, a good uh, sort of, um, I don't want to say sedative, but anxiety. They say it helps with anxiety. You know the thing about that stuff yet? Um, that's a, that's, that's a new wave. I I think that was just a, a way of them doing, doing something in a, uh, unlegalized situation legally, mm -hmm. uh, by, cause THC is what's that's the problem, what the, oh, right? That's, that's that. See, if it don't have THC in it, then it's just, it's just weed. But see what I did here. Is that CB, uh, CBD? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. It's definitely good for like the body and you know healing shit. I mean, I, I heard that, but I heard that from the people that sell it. So I never uh, took it myself. So I don't like to really go into shit. I could any weed I talk about, I done smoke the shit expeditiously. Right, I done smoke the shit a few times. <laughs> you can tell you about it. You know what I mean. Uh, but far as with that, to me, you know, and to most of, you know, my, uh, you know, the marijuana community, uh, the real smokers, they, that's looked at, that's like fake weed. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you know, it had to go through a process for you to abstract the THC out of it. Mm -hmm. And the whole purpose of smoking this shit is it's unprocessed. See, weed is weed is strong by the way it's grown. Mm -hmm. It's nothing added to the shit to the after it's after the real shit anyway. You know, you got motherfuckers that spray painting weed and all kind of shit. But you know, it's nothing really added to it. It's all put in the ground. You know, like that show the uh 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 gold rush. You're all millionaires. All you got to do is get it out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I like that old dude. And hey, get the D8 and pull it out. <laughs> hey, if that, that machine breaks down over there, it, it, it's going to be a major catastrophe. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I like that dude, man. <laughs> the father, man. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that's, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's basically, you know what I'm saying, uh, what it is. But like I said, I like to touch on things that, you know, like, I done experienced. I, I smoke sour. But when I'm on the West, I'm smoking OG in LA. When I go up to Oakland and all that, I'm into all the different kind of cookies and all of that. Mm -hmm. But on our next marijuana moment, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go into what a hybrid is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and and mention a couple of strands off the off the hybrid. Right. Right you know what I'm saying? You got a couple of other strands on here. Lemon pepper. You know what I'm saying? Lemon. I mean, lemon haze. Uh, super silver haze, strawberry cough. I done heard about that cough. You know what I'm saying? Super lemon haze. All of this. So just so you know or whatever. You know what I mean? Know what you know before you go in the dispensary. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to wrap up the marijuana moment. And uh, we about to move on to hot topics when we get back. Y'all make sure y'all come back. Your boy Jay Hop, my co-host Rage. We in the building. I'm loving this virtual hustle, nigga. <laughs> Man, I, um... So yeah, so we was talking earlier, man, and by the way, we about to get into hot topics. Hot topics, man. Welcome, Welcome to the hot topics, man. All right, so obviously, what's trending now, man, is the whole hashtag expeditiously issue, and our show is named hashtag expeditiously. But understand that whole franchise comes from sun right here. <laughs> Just to do your history, what took place on that rooftop and lean on me. When Morgan Freeman, as the uh, acting as Joe Clark, 
told him to kill himself expeditiously. We're going to go that right quick. See? We ain't no riders here, man. We start the thing. So hashtag expeditiously, that's us. Right. Your man, Jermaine Hopkins, co-host Rage. Now, on this particular issue right now, this being expedited. Right. <laughs> um, this so-called beef that's cracking with um, T.I. and Kodak Black. I just want to kind of give uh, some context to what I see. Um, first of all, shout out to both of y'all. Definitely want to shout out to T.I. I think what you did showed moral. It showed moral conviction. Right. You know what I'm saying? It showed maturity. And um, it had just enough, um, you know, uh, bravado that was needed that I feel the uh, that 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 misnomer that Kodak put out deserved. You know what I'm saying? Um, Kodak Black, shout out to you, respect. I see you. I looked at some interviews with you. Shout out I, to the young Kodak man. Yeah, you know. I've seen your interviews, man, and I realize that you are a lot smarter than people are giving you the credit for. Um, I think that maybe some of your intellect might be getting you know muddled in your slang. You know what I'm saying? You talk, I give it up. You know what I mean? But listen, there's a time and place for everything, young man. And I think that what we're just trying to say right now is pick your battles. Don't let your battles pick you. You dig? This is Art of War. Now, we're going to get into a conversation about mental health. Um, I think as hip-hop is coming of age, Hop, that finally, you know, the culture is beginning to identify certain things that have affected us in the hood. And we're embracing our humanness and beginning to understand it for what we go through in the experience in America that we need to put mental health on the platform as a priority to pursue because some of us ain't right. So I'm just drawing a correlation between the recent assassination of Nipsey Hussle, rest in power, and the claim that his assassin um, yeah, mental had mental issues. Right. Did. Um, you know, uh, you know, um, Kodak Black, man, for him to be getting the kind of trouble he's getting into, evidently, bro might be fighting with some shit. And then right. you could take it from here. I, I was talking with you earlier, and I feel like, man, even the late, great Tupac Shakur, right. you know, had to be dealing with some stuff, man. And I just want to look at that through line and, you know, get your opinion on that. You know what I'm saying? Well, uh, first of all, too, man, you know, mad shout out to Tip. You know, that's my G, uh, mad, mad love and respect, uh, the way he actually came out and, you know, how he addressed the matter or whatever. I mean, I, 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 I can't see him doing it in no more of a respectable OG letting the younger G know, like, listen, bro, that ain't how you want to do that. And you need to fix that shit expeditiously. Expeditiously. Because a lot of times when we do shit, we're inside of ourselves. We can't see what everybody else is seeing. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you have to be able to accept that. And I think a lot of the situation with when it comes to Kodak, you know, you got to look at what, what people done been through. And I use Pac as an example when we talk on... Uh, you know, mental health issues and shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, shout out to Charlemagne the God because he stays out in front of this, man. Mad respect, Breakfast Club. I'm coming up to the holla at y'all real soon. But uh, the mental health, and I like to, you know, use Pac as an example. Now, we all know Pac's history now. Prior to Digital Underground. I'm talking about when he was, before he was born. Born in jail. You know, uh, 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 had to you know be hidden, you know, uh, 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 because everything that his mother was. Yeah, going let me through. just put that in context for you to take up because you know that's my passion. Right, right. So just to be clear, Tupac Shakur is Black what fan, Black Panther Party. Absolutely, Tupac All Shakur day. is what you know. One of my um, advisors, Chairman Fred Hampton Jr. Shout out refers to as a Panther Cub, meaning he's that direct lineage of the original Black Panther Party. So his mother was a Phoenix Shakur. The Shakur family, uh, the Shakur name was a popular name that was adopted from the uh, New York branch of the Panthers. Okay. So a Phoenix Shakur was his mother. Um, Matulu Shakur, shout out Doc, he's doing life in jail right now. That was like his godfather. 
And of course, we know real it's- knowledge and facts. Y'all see that, right? Now y'all see why it's fat ass right here. <laughs> No, man. <laughs> Go ahead, you know, man. Right on. So, um, then Split you know, that knowledge, bro. So, uh, also, shout out to uh, the queen of Sada Shakur. Um, you know, she was broken out. She was ex- expedited expeditiously, right. expeditiously. <laughs> out of out of out of jail, and she has political asylum in Cuba. So, understand, I'm not attempting, or we're not attempting to tarnish the legacy of Tupac. What we're doing is having an intelligent conversation. He was born in a struggle. You understand? Right. He was born in a situation where he had to adopt certain, you know, frustrations. Exactly. And certain things. So, yeah. So, that's where we're drawing this reference to in terms of Tupac. Right. And, 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 and that in itself has to have some kind of mental effect, you know what I'm saying, either at that time or as time goes on. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that's not the normal way, childhood, adult, childhood yeah, yeah. right. So when things are, are not normal, a lot of time they leave an impression. They Absolutely. leave it, you know what I'm saying? They leave a footprint. And uh, Tupac is not the only one. We was talking uh, earlier and it's like, you got to realize when it come to hip hop, most of your rappers, the rappers that you really respect and love, wow. You respect and love them like that because they're from that. They're from that. They're from the same struggles. You know what I'm saying? The same hood struggles. And some worse than others. You can't give them a bunch of fame and a whole lot of money and expect all of that just to go away. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. I mean, you know, that's why they say like with education and knowledge. Right. Once you give it to me, you can't take it back. Right. So what make you think if I don't went through something in life that damaged me mentally, right. that any kind of tangible thing can basically change that or change mm-hmm. my way of thinking. Facts. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, I, you know, I just would like to use Pac experience as, as, as an example, because when my brother was here, man, uh, uh, you know, a lot of shit that he was saying didn't get heard until after he died. Same thing's happened with Nipsey Hussle, man. Same thing with Nip. You got people that didn't even know who the man was. I I agree. I mean, I was familiar that he was a rapper, and I know that he was doing some very important independent moves. Nip been out for a minute, man. Absolutely, but it wasn't until he passed that the brother landed on my radar, and, and which gives me a whole other opinion where I'm ready to just unpack everything about the circumstances related to his death. But, right, you know, right. the, the brother was moving on hood sovereignty. You know what I mean? He was moving on independence. He was, uh, he, he's already affected the so-called gang culture, uh, what Chairman Fred Hampton Sr. referred to as unpoliticized street tribes. And, you know, he's trying to heal that wound. So, definitely, man. Um, Yeah, I, I definitely concur with what you're saying, man. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like, you know, even with Nip's situation, nobody knew all the stuff that Nip was doing. If you knew his music, you didn't know what he was doing in the neighborhoods, getting with the mayors and and, and putting up courts and you know just you know uh, uh, trying to give back and, and and make it somewhere where giving you know back. What I'm saying? <laughs> you know, we're basically giving back. You know, not even trying. Yeah. I say trying because you know I don't feel like he. I, I feel he like he was far from finished. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So I say try because he, you know, he 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 got stopped before he could he he can get it complete. Right on. You know, but now they say dude, you know, got some mental issues going up. That man come up in the same type of neighborhoods with some of the same shit going on. You know what I mean? So, you know, uh it's something that we all all have to look at. And my thing that I like to like, you know, like to remind people. When it come to Kodak Black, no, I'm not with none of the shit that he did. You know, Kodak, holla at me, nigga. Holla at a real nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? On some real 100 man-to-man shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, Holla at Tip. Holla at the niggas that you got beef with because all of them can teach you something. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like, you know, Morgan Freeman told me and lean on me. (laughs) Boy, you young boys, you think you know everything, don't know shit. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's it's easy to be that way when you, you're in a position where 
you're able to come for nothing and become something. You know what I'm saying? That you did with your own talent. You know, and you take a young, a young, unguided, strong alpha male mm -hmm. and, and, and put him in that in, in that situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How you know we can't just say, okay, well, he should have did this, he should have did that. Yeah, that's you rationally thinking in your situation. Right. You know what I'm saying? Evidently, he's not thinking rational. So are we helping the situation? Man, fuck him. I ain't buying no more shit. No, we have to put him in a position for him to humble himself enough to listen to the motherfuckers that he got access to. I wish I could sit down and talk to Q-Tip. I mean, Q-Tip. Yeah, Q-Tip too. Uh, 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 T.I., you know, uh, on certain shit. Because I seen him take his career, jump in my lane, flourish on that shit, and then jump back and just keep that shit rocking. Right See, T.I. done lasted the, the test of time. T.I. Right. done been through generations. Kodak, you ain't racing. You, you, you ain't been through a generation yet. Right. You know what I'm saying? And one thing with my 30 years in the entertainment business that I learned, you could be on top today. Today. And tomorrow you down. You don't believe me? Young Kodak, look at your numbers. You know what I'm saying? The effect of your actions is being displaced on your numbers. But my problem with that is us as a people, we can go uh, 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 attack and affect a black man's income for saying something off the wall about another black man, family, wife, kids, whatever the case may be. But we can't use that same action, that same gesture, when it's a way bigger source trying to shut us down every damn minute they get. Facts, man. Yo, I think, Hop, that that's a great um, setup and prelude for... Um the conversation we just had with your man, the Do It All from Laws of the Underground. Shout out to my man, Do Do It All, Do. Love you, bro. Snook, man, we 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 honored to have, you know what I'm saying, a cat like Do doing what he doing in our city, man. And the kids that uh, he got an after school program he teach at, and everything, man. And it's it's just such an inspiration, man. It's it's a very wow. very very good inspiration. So shout out to my man, Do It All, Do. Newark, New Jersey, stand the fuck up. Right, so we're going to give y'all some uh, highlights of a conversation we just had with him via the shindig. Come back, expeditiously. So, yeah, we want to hear, hear, hear your thoughts on everything and how you feel about it. But, yeah, we got my man Do It All Do in the building. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Newark's finest in the building. Lord underground in the building. What up? Man. What up, hub? All right, all right. So let me, let me. I'm sorry. Let me just move this along. We definitely live on the podcast. Uh, hashtag X my boy Rage in the building. Y'all know my boy Rage, my co-host on Expeditiously yes, slash uh, producer. Yeah, extraordinary. Thank you very much. All right, all so right. let's let's put this into some um, context. We were motivated to do this, do it all because we see a kind of a through line of a, a need for clarity of mental health in hip hop in consideration of what just happened with, happened with Nipsey Hussle. And also uh, the Kodak Black thing with T.I. In my opinion, the dude keep on getting in trouble. It might be time to table a discussion. So we want to talk about how we could be more mature about dealing with these beefs today. And we want to get a vet like you and somebody who is, in my opinion, has evolved past just a hip hopper and is now obviously becoming a statesman. So you do it. Um, he can't hear me. I mean, oh. you broke up a little bit, but from as far as what I heard, man, you know, dealing with with mental health and hip hop, I think it's beyond hip hop, man. I think you know we really need to deal with mental health in our inner city communities, man. And, and it should start probably from the fourth grade on. And not just, not just you know, the children or the youth. We need to deal with it with the parents. 
because the youth are growing up and becoming parents and becoming citizens and, and adults in our communities, and they have issues. They have issues that, that they believe is normal. And what I mean by that, let me take myself, for example, before I start talking about anybody else. When I was seven years old, I lived on a block called 17th Street um, in Clinton Avenue in Newark, New Jersey. At that time, there was a guy on my block. I believe he was, I believe his name was Lance. He got shot in the stomach. I was standing right there when he got shot in the stomach at seven years old. So now you have a seven-year-old dealing with, with, um, with gun violence. Right. Then you have a seven-year-old right. dealing with Lance died. And all I remember my mother ever saying is get from over there and my aunts get from over there and get on the porch. But nobody ever dealt with a seven-year-old dealing with gun violence. Nobody ever dealt with a guy dealing with um, gun violence and, and death. You know what I'm saying? So you, you got all of these type of issues in our community where you have inner city children dealing with death all the time. They're dealing with um, right. gun violence all the time. And my point is they're dealing with so many things that shouldn't be normal for a child. So now these children grow up and the number one, the pop, anytime the pop culture is involved of any, in anything, it's, it moves society forward. It's the way that people react and live, you know, live by. It's the standard pop culture. It just so happens for the last 20 or 25 years, arguably, hip hop has been the pop culture. So now you have these people who need therapy within our communities who have never gotten ther therapy because they believe it's normal. They've been treated as, as these traumas in their lives have been normal. So now they grow up and they fall in love with the pop culture, which is hip hop. And they become famous and become stars in hip hop. And then we complain about the way that they're acting when really they need some therapy. They need some help. They need some, someone to talk to. And, and, and let me just say just for all of the black and brown people black out there, man, you know, you're not crazy if you go talk to a therapist. Okay. That's what I'm I, I think it's, you know, a little bigger than like uh, uh far as with his issue and and a lot of a lot of cats in that generation what they see what they used to yeah it has a different mental effect on them than what we seen and what we was used to back then and like you said he got the power of the money behind him but at the end of the day the teachings and the people that we looked up to and had respect for see in our era, if in our era when we was his age, oh, we would have respected a TI. You know what I'm saying? As a general, respectfully coming to us, telling you, look, you're out of line right now. You know what I'm saying? Fix that shit expeditiously. You know what I'm saying? And had every right to. You know what I'm saying? But Kodak, with, with the mentality of the youngsters where they at nowadays, it's no respect for the older cats. It's no respect for the ones that paved the way. So it's like, nigga, who is you to tell me such nigga? I'm my shit selling. Everybody hollering my, you know what I'm saying? You old news, this, that, and the other. But what we, you know, what we can't do is allow words to come out and stop us from recognizing that I don't agree with Kodak, but at the end of the day, Kodak is ours. Right. You know knows. what I'm saying? That's our fucking problem to fix. That's right. You see what I'm saying? So if we sit back and throw him to the wolves, you know, nah, that ain't the case. See, but he he has to he has to tap into the mature side of him to say, you know what? Let me just fall back and listen a little bit because when you got cats like Tank going live about some shit going on in hip hop, right, bro? Like, yo, man, you really need to take it down. Everybody would, you know, that I seen, you know, what I'm saying, far as let me just say, the uh, 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 you know, game is what he do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, much love, much respect the game. You know, it's all 100. You know what I'm saying? And I, I just really hope that we could take hip hop. That's why I wanted, you know what I'm saying, the whole show to be on some today versus the 90s. If we could take it back to the booth, you know what I'm saying? You know, back when niggas was, was, was battling each other and they was ending niggas' careers. 
You see what I'm saying? You know, niggas is ending niggas' careers. Rappers and 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 and, and, and shit was 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 keeping their shit in the booth. But now it's it's so much well, you know, we gotta be real. Niggas is trying to be so close to the street, uh, just as close to the streets as they lyrics that they sit in a safe environment and write. You see what I'm saying? They want to be so close to that that when certain actions come in the music business, we keep leaving the business part out. It's dealt with different. You trying to handle some shit in the business like you do on the street. Fact. So, yo, I just want to take a quick second, man. Um, Welcome, everybody, on the IG Live. You're getting a lot of strong fist signs and thumbs up. People shouting you out, do it all. Appreciate it, appreciate you know it. We all appreciate it. The biz. Um, y'all got any questions y'all want to shoot over to um, do it all, let me know, and I'll ask him and he'll answer it expeditiously. But let me shout out Miss King in the room, Cool Rick in the room, Sharika what up, Nine, cool, what up, my G, Cool Rick, Big cool Steel Rick. Five, what it is. What, what up, is? Steel? That's my son. What's up, boy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the building. All right, all right. So peace. I appreciate y'all checking in. Appreciate up, the love. I'm still here. What you say? Do it all. What you say? I said, "What up, the nephew?" Up, nephew. Still. still. All right. Do it all. Said, "What up, nephew?" Big still. So, "What up, pop?" What's up, my G? Word. So, we're gonna let y'all um continue the conversation, but I just wanna let y'all know on IG, I'm checking y'all. So, if anybody got any questions, anything y'all wanna say expeditiously, let us know. Um, I remember too that you know. He mentioned something that, yeah, it was too soon, right, right. you know, and all of that. But this is some shit that probably would have been, uh, you know, motherfuckers just had it in their mind, just ain't say the shit. You know right. what I'm saying? He can't be the only one thought about it. It's a beautiful woman. You know what right. I'm saying? And so he just said what was on a lot of motherfuckers' minds. Yeah, I mean, but we want to say a lot of stuff, man. That's what the majority does. That's what majority uh -huh. does for us. We want to say a lot of things in life. But that's what maturity, maturity does right? Us, that's man. exactly you what know I said. What I mean? It gives us tact, right? It gives tact. us understanding of when and when not to, right? You know that's what I mean? If you with your wife and a chick walk by with looking, you know, crazy, beautiful, you're not just gonna say like like some dudes might say, "Oh, babe, you see that?" They really just asking for permission to say, "Yeah, I saw that," but they're not <laughs> gonna <be> like, oh, <laughs> oh, permission to look. You know, they're not going to say that to their wife because right. they have chat. They have an right. understanding. That right. doesn't that doesn't make the lady less beautiful. It's just you with your wife and you have an understanding that I cannot speak like that right now. You know, and, and that's that's what is missing from these young brothers. But we have to ask ourselves, too, right. you know, as elders, where have we gone wrong? Because we right. that's what I said right earlier. Way. You That's know, we didn't pass early. it down the right way. If he's doing that, then somebody didn't pass it down to him the right way. You know, and that's, you know what, you that's know what? what these black men have to do. We got to stop looking at each other as competition and start building each other up, especially how we you. Right on. You know what? You know what I was. You know what I was thinking. Do it all. And um, me and uh, Hop was having a real sort of uh, controversial conversation. I've been studying Kodak Black before this quote-unquote controversy because I was. I was like. We'll keep on getting this dude in the hot water. So yeah. I would I would listen to him talk. I looked at his interviews and I was like, all right, the dude, in my personal opinion, he's actually too mature for his age. What he lacks is what you said, tact, finesse, yeah, we talked social about etiquette. That earlier. But the reason I say that is that he's so frustrated with certain things in the music business that he recalled it. Like everything he was saying about what he'd been through, man, these dudes in this business, some real fugazi shit. I don't really feel it. I felt him, I understand it. It's just that he hasn't learned that that art of war in terms of, you know, knowing when to speak or picking your battles. Don't let well, your battles you. The art of war is an experience, man. You know, mm. you learn through experiences. You know, so of course he's, he's more mature. Of right. course he, he acts higher than his age because struggle brings that out of you. Facts. Right. Anytime Big that, facts. Anytime that you struggle <laughs> with <laughs> any situation, you, right. you maneuver differently. Right. You know what I mean? You you right. because you have to. But what right. it doesn't do, it doesn't give you the the knowledge of experiences. You're learning it as you maneuver through it. That's right. why when you, when you get to your destination after you maneuver, then you start talking slick. You know mm. what I mean? Because you've already been through it. He's now experiencing those things because he wasn't taught that. He yeah. had to learn how to maneuver through those experiences that gave him his, his um 
we have a, a, a overwhelmingly problem in inner city communities, not just with rappers. We got regular dudes, man, who messed up. I told you, like I said, man, when I was seven years old, I seen gun violence for the first time. I seen a dude who lived on my block, 17th Street and Clinton Avenue, get shot in the stomach, and he died. Right. Nobody, came to the seven right. Year, nobody came to the seven-year-old and said, are you okay? Right. What, right. How did that affect you? What did that feel, being that you knew him walking up the streets every day? All my mother and auntie said was, get, off, get from over there and get on the porch. Now, that's light what some of our youth are going through in the communities. They're going right. through having to sit in classrooms with the cousin of somebody that killed their brother, killed their, their um, cousins or family members. Mm -hmm. And they got to sit in classrooms with them. And I'm talking from experience because I teach after school programs. You know what I mean? So you get to see what the children are going through. I really think that we need to address mental health expeditiously. That's right. You know what I mean? Like, right. like, we need to address it. Like, I, I think that um, violence in our communities is a mental health issue. Right, right. Thank you. You know, and shout out um, to Charlemagne the God. He, he be out on front on this. A lot of hip hoppers come from, from, you know, not so good areas because they're right. trying to make it out. So, like I said earlier, man, we can't totally condemn. Um, Kodak Black. Do I agree with Kodak Black? No. Right. Not right. at all. Right. But we can't right. just throw him to the wolves. No, We sir. can't just, you know, like his his streaming service, meaning his finances, his money has went down 700% in streams. That's a lot of bread to be lost. So if mm. we have that much power to attack a black man and not support him for not supporting another black man or disrespecting another black man and his wife, why can't we do that to the people who really disrespect us? Why can't right. we do that to On the, the big person? level? Why can't we do that to, to the people who kill us every day? Facts, facts. All right, you know, so we, we still got some blacks saying, I just bought, I just bought this Gucci. I'm still wearing it. When they show, they don't rock with us. Word. Back right. in the day in the 90s, it was Tommy Hilfinger. Facts. You know, it, it was facts. all of these people, it was Timbaland at one time. Big facts. But as soon as a black man does something to another black man, we on it. Right. We shut them yes. down instantly. Why can't we right. shut the other ones down that really are not for us? Because this black man just has a problem and he doesn't really fully understand because right. we gave him millions of dollars or he earned, we didn't give him anything, right. he earned millions of dollars at a right. young age and it didn't come with instructions. Please take this time and let us know what you're doing right now. What can we, what can we look for from you in 2019? 2019, man, I'm, I'm still hustling like a 70s dance, man. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to just be a part of my community in, in every kind of way. From we every um every Monday at 7:30 in Newark, New Jersey, we put on um what which I like to call our Black Wall Street event, but it's called right. Anita at La Rouge Lounge, where we give where we put people in the same room who want to buy real estate. We pe put people in the same room who want to invest. We put people in the room to help them fix their credit. We put people in the room to um venture capitalists. Uh, we put everybody in a room that can help them reach those goals. Because a lot of times, you know, people in the community, they don't have a lot of money. You know, they're working out of poverty. poverty. So we let them know that it's credit repair in the room. It's attorneys in the room. It's people in the room who got probably the same money you have or a little more money. In, and you can put it together and work together. You know, um, collective economics. That's what it's about. We don't see everybody else comes together except black people. That's right. We come together when, yeah. when somebody disrespects yeah. our culture, but we don't stay together. It happens for a week and then we go on. Right. You know, let you disrespect the Latino or Latina person. They're not buying your stuff. They're telling Ever. everybody not to vote for you. Anybody that's Latino or Latino, they're not rocking with you. Black people, right. we and march. And they their ass if they do. Right. We <laughs> march, we hop on it for a week, and then we off on it and we on to the next thing. Somebody disrespect us. Black Don't people are that. such so forgiving. We're such we're such good people when it comes to forgiving other people. You know what I mean? But but we don't stand for the cause for a long duration of time. You know, so we have to really understand our power. But the Willie Lynch theory, man, is really rocking within our veins, man. 
you know, inside Facts. our DNA. So Facts. we just got to get it together. I think that T.I. is a strong dude. I think that he will understand after what he said, how it was responded to what he said. I yeah. think he won't take it any further. Sure. I think he'll, he'll definitely check him, but that'll be in a private conversation or a private meeting. You know, I think if he does it the mature way, you know, because Kodak definitely needs to be checked, but, but, you know, Zopan has already checked him in Florida. You know what I mean? The yeah, I think he has. Checked him as well. I think he has a real, a real wake up call. Let me, yeah. ask, you, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Many of Kodak Blacks, though. He's just, right. we're talking right. about him because he's the famous guy right now. Right. Right. What up, y'all? It's your boy, Do It All. Do Pray Kelly from that legendary hip hop group, Lords of the Underground, man. Look, man, if you're not dealing with my man, J Hop, you know, Jermaine Huggy Hopkins, man, you're not dealing with my man, Rage then you're not dealing with things expeditiously, man. Come on, man. Expedite it, man. Deal with the situations. Deal with the current events. Deal with now. Deal with RAT now. R-A-T now. And I'm not mm. talking about 6-9. Deal with R-A-T <laughs> now expeditiously. That's right.